Good afternoon. It is Sunday, September 9th, 2012. This is Jason Horak reporting on the Dodge Daytona electric vehicle. What we're looking at in specific today is the charger. Um, we've got the charger reinstalled in the car and it is hooked up just as it was before um, except that the NEMA 14-50 outlet and Anderson connector are now within that weather tight um, box underneath um, you know in that middle battery box it was just reinstalled uh, or just installed recently so wiring is pretty simple um, the battery or the charger has uh, the DC connection which goes to that Anderson connector and then the AC connection that plugs into the wall goes into that uh, NEMA 14-50 outlet and then is wired underneath to this charge port <clears throat> which is a Marine Co. Marine style charge port um, which is rated at up to 50 amps and it has the three um, you know, main blades there as well as the ground um, and so that plugs into this generator style uh, cord which again has the three uh, slots there and then the ground so anyway it's under this little weatherproof cover kind of goes in here like this with a little bit of a twist and then it will not come out it's nice and secure um, so that's the cord and then it's plugged into you know it's just kind of looped around there um, and it's just plugged right here into this NEMA 14-50 uh, st standard outlet um, just like you'd have for a dryer or electric stove um, also apparently it's fairly common at campgrounds for charging the large rigs uh, across the United States um, so anyway that's the wiring and uh, we just want to go through a couple uh, safety things and uh, then we'll go ahead and turn the charger on for the first time uh, since we had a problem with it. Um, now the problem that we had uh, was actually that the charger stopped working um, back in uh, August and uh, I forget exactly what day it was but it was in the middle of August sometime it just stopped, start, stopped charging and uh, I ended up contacting Manzanita Micro and uh, talked with a nice gentleman, I think by the name of Steven, um, who walk, walked through some troubleshooting steps with me. Um, you know, I showed him my video that I took, uh, explained that I, yeah, I did not have it hooked up backwards, everything was the same as it had been since early 2010 when I bought the charger. And, um, you know, everything was working great up until middle August, so, uh, of 2012. So, anyway, um, he told me about the uh, that there's a fuse inside and so I, at his instruction I ended up opening up the charger which is a uh, you know there's basically six bolts on top uh, five on each side and you just remove the top cover and that reveals a fuse now the fuse is a little fuse um, actually that's the brand name little fuse um, it's a L50S 50 amp and I can't really read it real well on here, but I think it's a 450 volt DC uh, rated fuse. Um, so the, the charger, of course, is rated, I think, up to 300 volt uh, DC and up to 40 amp output. So this fuse should be more than adequate to handle it. Anyway, this particular fuse is the one that was in there and it had blown. Um, there's a little bit of score or carbon scoring right there, a little. Uh, discoloration which may be an indi indicative of it blowing I'm not sure um, but I just to be sure this was the problem I ended up putting um, the leads of the uh, you know just basically set it on one of the one of the terminals there um, turned on my turned on my meter and then I can see that I have you know 198 volts uh, on the regular um, you know, on, on, on this side of the, of the fuse, but on this side, we had nothing. Um, so, and the meter's kind of searching there, so we're seeing lots of numbers, but let's put it, zero it out here. Okay, so 198, 198 on that side, 
and then on this side, nothing. Um, so, anyway, or at least within the realm of what the <laughs> this shows when it's not hooked to anything. Um, so, anyway, so that's the uh, that's the fuse situation, and I had ordered two new fuses from Manzanita, and they kindly shipped them out um, very quickly, and I got them put into the charger, and unfortunately the car was ripped apart and all the batteries were out, so I couldn't test it or uh, you know charge the pack until today. So today I've got it all hooked back up, and uh, just as a recap. Um, again, I showed this in an earlier video, but these two wires, um, this one here, and then there's a black one right here. So these two, positive and negative, that's where the Anderson connection in the back goes up that wire and connects to positive and negative um, on a high voltage wiring shelf. So that's the wiring for the charger. And as you can also see, we're at 198.2 volts. So, you know, it's connected. <laughs> um, and uh, I just wanted to sh show that that was all hooked up right. You know, we have, it's a positive 192. <laughs> uh, you know, again, there's no, things aren't hooked up backwards or anything. And uh, there we go. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is go ahead and turn on the charger for the first time. And uh, I don't really anticipate there being any problems, but uh, just in case, I wanted to make sure everything was on film. Uh, because these type of things are, <laughs> you only turn on the charger for the first time once, and uh, anyway, so we're going to put the seats down, and then I'm going to get in here so that we can get a good view of the charger, and as you can see, I've got my Vichy special plastic screwdriver ready to go, and uh, what that's used for is you put it in the volts trim a hole here where there's a potentiometer that we can turn to adjust the voltage. Um, and the reason why we'll need to do that is that the original battery pack was 180 volts and uh, when it was fully charged and now there's seven more batteries so there's it's going to be 204 volts fully charged. So we're going to need to make an adjustment there anyway. Also during my troubleshooting um, I had removed this charger from the car and um, I hooked it up to a 12 volt battery. Um, you know, so it's just charging a 12 volt battery, and so I had to adjust the volts trim down to around 12 volts so that it would um, theoretically trip the limits at a much lower rate. Um, so anyway, um, also just kind of wanted to point out that the switches are all set to the original, um, you know, manual, uh, the Manzanita manual. Uh, of one is on, two is off, three and four are on, five, six, seven, and eight are all off. And again, that's just the standard, uh, you know, kind of defaults, uh, which have been working quite well in this car since around 2010 when, when I got the charger, you know, early 2010. So, um, as you can see, it's a PFC 40M, uh, number 96. I think that's the uh, serial number, but I'm not positive. Um, so anyway, so before we turn it on, we want to make sure that the um, amp knob is set all the way counterclockwise as far as it will go so that it won't be passing any current when we first turn it on. Um, and that way there's not like a surge or anything and, you know, we just want to save the components and so forth. So turning it on is fairly straightforward. We're just going to flick this, um, it's like a a breaker switch like you find in a fuse panel um, and there's, so there's two switches we're gonna go ahead and turn it on whoa and there was a very large pop and the thing just turned right off again so that's no good um, presumably that was the fuse that just blew um, there's a little smell of smoke as well not not, not a lot but um, just a bit so, not really sure what's going on there, but we're guessing nothing good. Oh yes, I see smoke kind of wafting out here now uh, from the Volt's trim hole. So there's certainly something wrong with the charger. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I checked all my, my hookups, everything is hooked up the way it should be, and it just went pop. So, I'm guessing it's dead. Uh, <laughs> 
great. Um, Alright, well I wasn't really expecting that to happen, so I'm going to be uh, taking this video and uh, sending it to Manzanita Micro. Um, and uh, along probably with the charger, I've got about a week and a half before the car has to ship to Missouri for the convention, so the timing is not so good. Um, yeah, there's definitely smoke coming out of this thing. Uh, not, not a lot, but uh, just a little bit. I can see it wafting away, so... Great! So, um... I don't know. So I guess I'm going to pull this all out of here, and then I'll, I'll go through and, and check all the, all the wires again. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's definitely a, a problem. Uh, <laughs> I guess we'll, we'll go from there, and uh, I'll get back to you with some kind of um, troubleshooting steps, and uh, we'll take the cover off and take a look at what's happening inside, and we'll go from there. All right, be right back. Okay, this is a follow-up to the smoking charger incident from a little bit ago. Um, just wanted to go through some basic troubleshooting and uh, try to figure out what the heck happened to my Manzanita charger. Um, so what we've done is I pulled the charger out of the car um, and actually pulled all the all the uh, screws out of it to take a look inside. Um, but also, I wanted to show you on the car side, this is the NEMA 14-50. Um, outlet, and this is the Anderson connector um, that are in the middle battery box, again weatherproof now, and they're just kind of sitting here chilling. Um, the, uh, so we'll go ahead and test on our meter. Um, the Anderson connector, again, is really hard to screw up. There's a positive and a negative on it, <laughs> and the charger can only plug in one way um, on its Anderson connector. So we'll go ahead and put the meter on here, and we'll see that we're at 198.2 volts. So that's hooked up to the main battery pack. Um, again, this cord goes all the way up to the front um, into the main wiring shelf um, in the pot, uh, pack positive and pack negative connections. So, you know, just like it always has. So we're also going to take a look at the AC side of things. So we'll put the meter into the AC mode. And uh, we see that that cord, you know, it goes out here to the charge port, and it's plugged in up there to an, another um, NEMA 14-50 outlet, um, just a standard, you know, like a dryer electric stove plug. Um, and so the 240 volts AC uh, comes into here, and I believe it is these two, left and the right. Showing it 242.1 volts AC. So we've got, uh, as far as I can tell, the correct voltage here. And um, I can hold those in there securely, but uh, you know, there we go. 242.3. 2.3. Um, so anyway, that is the AC side of things, and the DC side, which are correct as far as I can tell. Um, so now let's go ahead and take a look at the actual charger. I'll pry myself out of my little car here, which is a little tricky, trying not to make everyone hurl with the camera work. Okay, so here is the charger, and <clears throat> we've taken it apart. Um, I did put the meter on the uh, on the fuse, and the fuse does not appear to have blown. Um, so that wonderful pile of smoke we had coming out of here did not come from the fuse. Um, I've looked over the, the breadboard here, just kind of eye, you know, with my eyes, and I'm going to drop this. I'm going to set this very gently up on the edge there. Okay, there we go. Um, and so as you can see. There's nothing visibly wrong with it. Um, I'm not sure what you know what broke. It's pretty clean in here. Um, I don't see any uh, you know, smoke stains <laughs> from any part that uh, that died. So I don't know what's going on. Um, I mean, it's you know there's a whole lot of electronics here that I don't understand, but um, it, there isn't anything. <laughs> visibly wrong with it, but when I hooked it up, there was definitely smoke coming out, so 
I think it's got to go back to uh, to Washington, um, which is really, really inconvenient for me because I've got to ship the car in about a week, um, maybe a week and a half if I'm lucky, but um, it's uh, getting down to crunch time and I'll be in Missouri. Uh, who knows, maybe I can have them ship me the charger to Missouri and I can uh, hope to be able to charge when I'm at the convention. So that's fun. Um, but anyway, I like I said, everything is hooked up um, correctly, and uh, you know the uh, Anderson connector has a positive and negative. You can only plug it in one way, and it was plugged in the right way. Um, and you know, again, the uh, the regular plug can only go in one way, and that was plugged in the right way too. So I'm not really sure what's going on, um, but clearly there's there is a problem, um, and, uh, you know, maybe the, uh, I, I don't even know, I can't even guess what's, <laughs> what, what might be wrong. Um, so all the dip switches um, on the charger, again, are set to the Manzanita defaults from, from the manual, and, uh, you know, I had the volt knob all the way, or the amp knob, rather, cranked all the way down to the minimum setting, um, you know, so there shouldn't have been any amps flowing at all. And it made a bad pop, and smoke came out. So I'm going to send this video to Manzanita um, and um, talk to my buddy Steven, and hopefully he'll have some ideas. Um, you know, and if I have to, I'm, I'm going to ship the charges to them anyway, um, kind of on general principle, um, and hopefully that they can figure out what's going on um, uh, on their end. So. Anyway, I guess we'll go from there, and I'll let y'all know what happened. <laughs> Take care, and have a good day. Okay, kids, don't try this at home. <laughs> As you can see, I have the charger uh, cover taken off, and all of the uh, screws were taken out there. And um, so what we can see here is there's the fuse on the charger, which is not blown. According to the meter, I can... Uh, it's still passing, uh, passing current through. Um, just when I hook up the uh, impedance thing or whatever on it. Um, so that seems to be fine. Um, again, there's no visible signs of any damage inside the uh, charger, um, but it definitely made very scary pop noise and um, smoke came out. So obviously there's something wrong. Uh, we just don't know what. So. Anyway, uh, I'm reproducing my 12 volt test from before, and so basically what we've got is just a little 12 volt AGM battery, and it's hooked up to the Anderson connector uh, battery leads, positive and negative. Again, very hard to screw this up, and so we're gonna head, go ahead and put in uh, our test leads here. If I can get them to stay, that would be nice. And so now we're showing 12.71 on the meter. Um, so again, we're not turning on the charger unloaded or anything, but uh, we're going to go ahead and hook this up to the charger. I'm going to use two hands for that because it's a little bit tricky. Let's set the camera down here. So, there we go. Positive and negative. Again, kind of hard to get that wrong. Uh, so, and there we are. So now we're going to go ahead and plug in the charger. Um, and again, normally I would never run this thing without the cover on, but... So there we go. We are in. Plugged in and ready to be terrified. Alright, so once again, the amp knob is completely down. And we're going to go ahead and turn it on. Oof. Okay. Well, that was very, uh, bracing. <laughs> So we got some uh, we got some smoke and some sparkage, and now at least we know where it's coming from. It looks like it's right around the fuse. I have no idea what that's all about. It's a brand new fuse, and the fuse seems to work. So why would it be doing that? Um, great. Uh, anyway, so that's the test. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and send this video to Manzanita and um, see if Stephen has any any ideas. Um, that's just scary, so I'm not sure. <laughs> anyway, uh, take care and uh, have a good day.